hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. When it comes to evolution, it's always the, one of the main evidence for evolution has always been the paleontological. I might spell that wrong. Paleontological evidence of evolution. And what that basically means is it's the fossil records. So we often look at the fossil records to make judgments on what happened in the past. Because that's one of the best ways we can look at the past and look at the fossil records. We, don't, we can't travel back in time, but we can look at the fossil records. Now there's a couple of different scenarios. First of all, there's the Horus fossils, which show a pretty interesting trend. So the Horus fossils are what we consider to be the complete a complete set of fossils. What that means is that we can see all the in-between forms from the early horse to the current horse. Right, so here this would be the earliest form of the horse. This is the early horse. And over a couple of hundred million years it went from this tiny horse to our current horse. This is our current horse. And there have also in forms in between. These are called the transitional forms. Transitional forms. So you can see how they go from small, but bigger, but bigger, but bigger, and then ultimately to what we have today. And we have been able to make this assumption that this has happened due to the fossils we found, right? So this is the earliest one, very small. This is the current one, quite big. And then all of the fossils in between are in that medium range. So we can, and then the dates also match. So this would have been dated earlier than this, then this would have been dated earlier than this, and then this com comes this here, then the current one comes after this one. So the sequence is correct, and we can see how we go from small to big. Right, so for the horse it's complete, but for other things, for a lot of other things, it's actually incomplete. So in this case it was snail fossils, and these snail fossils are what is considered incomplete because in this case we actually go from we find a lot of fossils um, here like these ones all the same and we find all of these ones and this is over a long period of time of millions of years and this is called stasis remember what homie stasis was homie was keeping and stasis was same so stasis means same so over this period it always was the same and all of a sudden within a very short period of time, evolutionary speaking, it would still be hundreds of thousands of years, but we went from this one and then the fossil records all of a sudden showed a much bigger one. And that one, a much bigger one, as soon as it appeared, stayed the same again for next couple of millions of years. So after rapid change, there was again, there was stasis where it was kept the same. So here we don't have any transitional forms. We have no transitional forms. We just go from one more or less to the other and nothing in between or very little in between. Or if there is in, something in between, it would have come so quick that we couldn't have gotten their fossil records. So obviously that we raised a couple of questions. And the biggest one would be, why did this happen? Why are there no fossil records? Why is it incomplete? And this is what I'm going to talk about in this video. A couple of different theories as to why that might be the case. And the Dopon says, describe the concept of punctuated equilibrium in evolution and how it differs from the gradual process proposed by Darwin. Right, so we're going to talk about punctuated equilibrium and compare it to Darwin's theory of evolution. Now first I'll quickly talk about Darwin's theory of evolution. So there's a couple of just key concepts. First of all that evolution is due to natural selection. So natural selection selects the ones which are best adapted to the environment and over time that creates a change in the species and even with more time they can create a new species. Right? So that was the, un the fundamental thing underpinning evolution is that natural selection occurs and that causes evolution. Now the second part is, or another two points, is that it occurs over a long time span. So that you know it's a slow process, like with the horse here for example, you know, we start small and then go big, but this takes from there to there takes a long period of time hundreds of millions of years, if not billion, mostly hundred millions of years. Right? So this might take hundred million of years and usually we have these 
transitional forms in between. So it takes a long period of time and it's, it's gradual. So it's step by step. Right? That's what, so Darwin came up with that theory that evolution occurs in natural selection that occurs over a long period of time and it's a step by step process. And the horse fossils would back up that claim. So the horse fossils are evidence for that because here we have the complete set. So again, with this idea, you know, we'd have, let's say here we have these bugs and let's say that if you have your legs to the side and you have short legs, that that's a favorable trait and over time your environment would pick for that trait. Maybe it means you can walk on the grass a bit easier. So in this case you would have these different fossils and over time they so some of them would die out maybe or would less chance of them being successful and the other ones would be successful because it has its legs to a side and they're relatively short but even then you could still have these could have offspring which have variation and then they could even have shorter legs and then eventually they could become even shorter and this might take millions of years but over time we have a organism which is really well adapted to the environment and takes gradual process takes long time anything that doesn't isn't fitted for the environment dies out that is Darwin's fear of evolution how that differs from punctuated evolution is like so this is the idea of evolution of Darwin's evolution Darwin's evolution so we've got our butterfly here has these colored um, wings and then they gradually change and then you have eventually have these two new species one with black and white the other one with brown and orange they're all different from the original one this took a long time was gradual you can see the transitional forms in between now this is Darwin but this here next is the punctuated equilibrium or punctuated evolution punctuated equilibrium here you can see this was our starting one we have the same one and we have the same ending ones plus this one as well but what happens is it's not a gradual process you know there's no transition forms all of a sudden you know, it's stable and then boom we have that one and stable and boom we have that one and then they remain that way so here we have short bursts of evolution followed by long periods of stableness and that's the idea of punctuated evolution so the main things underpinning the punctuated evolution is that evolution mainly occurs to natural selection, just like Darwin's theory, so that is the same for both. But the difference is that it's, it, um, there are long periods of stability followed by rapid change. So that's different from ev theory of evolution. In theory of evolution, it was always change more or less, and then eventually it would evolve through gradual process into a new species. Here it says there's long periods of stability, and then all of a sudden there is rapid change. Now, some of scientists tried to explain this way. Let's say we have this same area here, and the environment would have been the same for lots of time, all, lots of periods of time. All of a sudden, there might have been a really warm period, which started to come and creep in. Now, how we have ice ages, we have warm periods. These occur naturally. And what might have happened is that maybe over a period of 10,000 or 100,000 years, the grassland turned to desert. In a very short period of time. So this from going from grass to desert would have been maybe 10,000 to 100,000 years. And this is quite a common occurrence where you have things changing quite quickly. And the idea now is that whatever is best adapted to the environment will survive. If the conditions are so harsh, so dramatic that then all of them will die, sometimes some will be able to survive and those will be passed on. So that's one theory is that the change is so, so dramatic that only the, the fittest will survive and thereby having a, a really quick change in the actual species because the actual change was also really fast in terms of the environment. If the environment changes really fast, then the actual species also have to evolve really fast. Or another theory is if that happens, what could happen theoretically is let's say this bug is close, is here, and it's close to Greenland, so it leaves the desert because it doesn't like the desert, it goes to Greenland. Now this lived right on the border of the desert. And let's say it was a family, so the family looked all quite similar. And all of a sudden there's a family which is isolated from all of the other ones. 
And what happens if there's if there's isolation? Well, if there's isolation, then only this only the ones which look quite similar because they're maybe all you know, close related, they will reproduce. And over time, maybe quite quickly, you might have a new species being created because it's more or less inbreeding. And the variation, so, you know, if these have all have long legs, the first one that moved over, the first couple that moved over, they have, all have long legs, then all of the new ones will also have long legs, even though that might not be the case for your common bugs. The common bug might have, you know, short legs, but because this one guy who was, or this one bug which was close to the border had long legs, thereby all the offspring had long legs. And this is maybe also how it can occur. So it couldn't occur to, to fleeing, Naturally, so fleeing, or because the environment changes so quickly that within a very short period of time, only the fittest get selected. Therefore, we have a change which is really rapid as opposed to gradual and slow. So this again, this is the idea of um, Darwin's evolution here. We have a lizard, it gradually changes, becomes different color, then maybe smaller, and this might take a long time. Whereas puncture equilibrium means we would go from a lizard to maybe a bird within a short period of time. So the change is dramatic and the period of time is quite short as well. That was puncture equilibrium. So again, the crunch point here is evolution, occurs to natural selection, so does puncture evolution. But the difference is that evolution occurs, Darwin's theory of evolution occurs over a long period of long time span and it's gradual, whereas puncture evolution is due to uh, it has long periods of stability where everything keeps the same, but as soon as the environment changes dramatically, then there's a rapid change in the species. So hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.